you tweeted once again, mm -hmm. quote, when I talk to ChatGPT, I'm talking to an NPC. What's going to be interesting and perhaps scary is when AI becomes a first person player. Uh, so what does that step look like? I'd really like that tweet, that step between NPC to first person player. What's required for that? Is that kind of what we've been talking about? This kind of in external source of coherence and inspiration of how to take the leap into the unknown that we humans do. The search, man's search for meaning. LLM's search for meaning. I don't know if the language model is the right paradigm because it is doing too much. It's giving you too much. And it's hard once you have too much to take away from it again. The way in which our own mind works is not that we train a language model in our own mind and after the language model is there, we build a personal self on top of it that then relates to the world. There is something that is being built, right? There is a game engine that is being built. There is a language of thought that is being developed that allows different parts of the mind to talk to each other. And this is a bit of a speculative hypothesis that this language of thought is there, but I suspect that it's important for the way in which our own minds work. And Building these principles into a system um, might uh, be a more straightforward way to a first-person AI. So to something that first creates an intentional self and then creates a personal self. So uh, the way in which this seems to be working, I think, is that when the game engine is built in your mind, it's not just following gradients where you are uh, stimulated by the environment and then end up with having a solution to how the world works. I suspect that building this game engine in your own mind does require intelligence. It's a constructive task where at, at times you need to reason. And this is a task that we are fulfilling in the first years of our life. So during the first year of its life, an infant is building a lot of structure mm -hmm. about the world that does inquire experiments and um, some first principles reasoning and so on. And in this time, there is usually no personal self. There is a, um, a first-person perspective, but it's not a person. This notion that you are a human being that is interacting in a social context and is confronted with an immutable world in which objects are fixed and can no longer be changed, in which the dream can no longer be influenced, is something that emerges a little bit later in our life. Mm -hmm. And I personally suspect that uh, this is something that our ancestors had known and we have forgotten. Because I suspect that it's there in plain sight in Genesis 1, in this first book of the Bible, where it's being described that this creative spirit is hovering over the substrate mm -hmm. and then is um, creating a boundary between the world model and sphere of ideas, earth mm -hmm. and heaven, as they're being described there. And then it's uh, creating um, contrast and then uh, dimensions and then space mm -hmm. and uh, then it creates organic shapes and um, solids and liquids and builds a world from them and creates plants and animals, gives them all their names. And once that's done, it creates another spirit in its own image, but it creates it as man and woman, as something that thinks of itself as a human being and puts it into this world. And the Christians mistranslate this, I suspect when they say this is uh, the description of the creation of the physical universe by a supernatural being. Mm -hmm. I think this is literally a description of how in every mind a universe is being created as some kind of game engine by so, uh, a creative spirit, our first consciousness that emerges in our mind even before we are born. And that creates the, uh, the, the interaction between organism and world. And once that is built and trained, the personal self is being created and we only remember being the personal self. We no longer remember how we created the game engine. So God in this view is the first creative mind in the it's early- It's the first consciousness. And in the early days, in the early months yes. of development. And it's forget. still there. You still have this outer mind that creates your sense of, your, of whether you're being loved by the world or not and what your place in the world is, right? It's something that is not yourself that is producing this. It's your mind that does it. So there is an outer mind that basically is an agent that determines who you are with respect to the world. And while you are stuck being that personal self mm -hmm. in this world until you get to stage six and you destroy the boundary, 
Right. And we all do this, I think, earlier in, in small glimpses. And maybe we're, sometimes we can remember what it was like when we were a small child and get some glimpses into how it's been. But for most people, that rarely happens. 